Hi, everybody. Oh, dear. Can I um, get that turned down somewhat? I'm, I don't want anyone to be deaf. <clears throat> so, I've branded myself the one woman show. So this is my 18 minute, I'm gonna try and make it to 18 minutes. I talk really fast, so it may be more like eight. Uh, but this is the story about me and how I came to be the one woman show. So, go team Discovery Channel. It's a reference for my friend Chris over there uh, from The Simpsons. What exactly is branding? Oh, and before I even start, of course, the theme, of course, is linchpin today. And I've realized that I've, as I'm going through all the different bios of the speakers, that I found myself having things in common with them, which is actually really cool. So you'll never know who you'll meet. Uh, for example, I would be, I guess, the third professor from Sheridan College that's here today. And then, obviously, for Tyler, my CFL roots right here. And I'm trying to be, uh, trying to be an actor. That's gonna, a dream I'm gonna hold on to forever. And I went to the University of Windsor, uh, as did Mr. Dinosaur Guy. <laughs> I would like something named after me. I mean, even something like this red dot on the floor, just to say, hey, I got something named after Tamara Lopez. So what exactly is branding? And to go through this picture, I thought it was the best one of my face. I have a face for radio, as I'm told. So this is why I'm going to distract you with lip gloss and pictures of my face. I, ironically enough, won a contest. Uh, and I was able to be the assistant general manager for the Toronto Argonauts for a day. Random, so random. And I'm gonna let you know my life is full of randomness. And that's how I'm standing here on this random red dot. What is a brand? I don't mean like this. I don't mean like this guy. That's how I feel half the time too. I wake up and there's nothing going on in here. And I don't mean like Russell Brand, right? What a diss, okay. Confused yet? I know, me too. <laughs> him full time. We're going to talk about building your brand and finding something that you do that you're really good at. Uh, for me, it's talking nonstop. So I was like, I'm going to be able to be a public speaker. Uh, of course, there were some hurdles I had to get over first. So you're going to build your brand. Here we go. Who's this? Oh, man. I know. No, it's not my daughter to my face. Okay, it's me. Uh, I was about four years old in this picture, and that was my first professional photo shoot. I guess you can call it. Um, I don't have the Cabbage Patch doll. I kind of took her out. It was kind of cheesy. But you have one. You're like, look at me. I'm four. I'm in daycare. And ever since that picture, I said, I am never met a camera I didn't like. And I said, I'm going to be an actor. And that was my dream. And it still is. And I'm going to dream, like I said, forever with that. From here, I got ugly. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to show a picture of those awkward stages, but I mean, I was four. I'm going to be an actor. My mom was like, oh, you know what, tomorrow maybe we should take that dream. You have a very cute smile. So we went to different agencies, and she has, of course, um, been my mentor and been my rock for my entire life. So we go to all of these different agencies, and they give you all these broken or empty promises at the same time they empty your wallet. And they're like, oh, yeah, for sure, we're going to get you a career. Yo, your daughter's going to be stellar. You wait, Mrs. Lopez. It's going to be fantastic. When my parents split, which was a very big surprise for me, I, I was eight and it came as a bit of a shock, and my mom took me out of you know, life in, in Toronto, where, or in, yeah, in Toronto, North York, where I had done a few school plays, and I was hoping to continue on that because I realized when I'm in front of people, I feel very alive as a person, and that's where I find my passion. So we go to Mississauga. Now, of course, I go to that awkward stage, and I, I, I don't have any pictures of that because I had to go. I learned that I couldn't see very far, so I got glasses. Uh, my mom left my father. Uh, they were like, your daughter has a speech impediment, and so I had to go through uh, speech pathology, be able to correct my speech. Um, very awkward. I grew pimples. I grew to be five foot ten. Nothing fit me. I didn't fit on my bed. And then I was in high school. So while I was in high school, I thought I'm going to participate in everything that I possibly can because like, things at home weren't the greatest. My mom was now going back to school, single mother, raising me and my sister, who I tormented all the time because I'm like twice her size, and she was going to be a nurse. And so I would do everything I could. I, again, once I became comfortable with my own skin, being like Amazon, because everyone seemed to be shorter than I was, and now I feel really short with the way that the world's growing, organic foods and stuff. Um, I'm actually short at five foot ten now. I did the morning announcement, so everyone's like, oh, I recognize that voice. And it's pretty distinctive. I'm going to let you know I sound like a man over the phone, especially when I'm recorded. 
Uh, I get called Mr. Lopez even to my face, which is awkward. Uh, I should really see about getting that mustache waxed, I guess. I did, I was on student council. I attended different conferences while I was in, in high school as well. And it was, it was nice because one time I got recognized for that, actually twice, I was really surprised. I ended up getting uh, something from Jostens. Now, that me dating myself, remember they took your cheesy photos? Jostens took pictures. So they ended up giving me uh, an award. It's called Service Above Self. And I realized that I like to give, and I, I give, and I give, um, I give you the clothes off my back, but then I'd be standing here and nothing. So I would like to, I gave back to my community, obviously, so on student council, I was one of the representatives. I was one of the representatives, and there is a spaceship coming. <laughs> uh, and they gave me this ring. It was really cool, and it was called the Service Above Self Award, and it was a ring that signified the fact that you contributed so much to your school. I made my first TV commercial when I was in high school as well. I was like, oh, Hollywood, here I come, 30 seconds. Why TV commercial that I don't think anyone even saw it? But I know I made this commercial and it was going to bring me to stardom. Obviously, I'm standing here, so it didn't. <laughs> I decided to create other jobs for myself. Like, how can I get out there? And the same with Saga had a great idea. Love Hazel. She had a concept where, you know, okay, so 2000 is coming, the year is coming, and it's either the world's going to end or we're going to party like it's 1999 with Prince, I don't know, one of the two. So they had an idea where they're going to do this mascot idea, and you can draw it, and you, you can get a prize. And I called them up, I'm like, yeah, hi, I'm Tamara Lopez, and I don't draw, but I can act, so I'll wear your costume. And they're like, I'm sorry, who is this? And I was like, it's Tamara Lopez with a T. Uh, <laughs> they took down my name and phone number. And eventually they had this costume design, they ended up building it. They go, oh, yeah, remember us from the city? Did you want to wear this costume? So lo and behold, I got to be Mr. Saga. I can tell you that now because the costume has now been retired. At the time, I was like, I can't tell you what I do. So now the costume's been retired, and I ended up being the mascot for the city of Mississauga uh, for uh, over a year and a half while they were bringing in the year 2000. So obviously we're still here, all that cases of water you purchased was a big waste because nothing happened. I called, and so back then I even had the many faces of Tamara Lopez, and they're like, oh, who is this chick with like, multiple looks and the plays that I've done, and I got a yearbook page, and I felt very special. I was going to go to the University of Windsor. Well, initially I was going to go and obviously run away to Hollywood, but my mom's like, where are you going? You have no money. So I applied to different schools, and I said, um, I missed my audition at University of Toronto because I got the dates mixed up. Epic fail. And then Ryerson's like, your grades aren't high enough. Get by and you're good look somewhere else. So Windsor was like, hey, congratulations. You can basically breathe. Come to our school. So I went to the University of Windsor. Went to the University of Windsor. That is me standing there with a very expensive piece of paper that got me nothing, uh, <laughs> but a lot of debt and heartache afterwards. I go to the University of Windsor, and I was there, and I'm doing my audition, and everyone else is there like, oh, my God, and feng shui, and you breathe, and so-and-so. And I was like, I'm just, I feel like I'm a natural. So. I obviously was not as good as I thought it was in my own head, which is a big ego crusher. And they put me in the general drama program, and I learned nothing. What a piece of junk. They were like, you can go to stagecraft. I said, like, I don't draw. And so I ended up failing stagecraft with all these deeds because the guy's like, well, you know, the person will fall through the floor. I don't draw. <laughs> so I ended up getting a way more tangible, tangible degree. It was obviously going to get me the best career ever. It was realistic, and it was so intense, and it was psychology. Again, what was it going to get me? Um, Exactly, right? A very tangible degree right there. Uh, psychology, airy fairy, flighty stuff, lay on my couch and tell me your problems. What do you see in this ink blot? <laughs> but I was like, you know what? It's better than actually doing real science because I definitely failed there. I actually wore a costume for the University of Windsor. I can tell you again that costume's been retired since I passed out. Uh, it was a really bad experience, and I was taken off of the field in a stretcher. And it was a Lancer because we're the Windsor Lancers go team Spartan, I guess. So I wore that costume and it was just awful. They made it out of, I don't know, like some space suit, foam insulation stuff, sweat your bag off, it was terrible. So I fainted and I had, there I am, the mascot on a stretcher going to the hospital. It was really funny. <laughs> but again, while I was there, I decided to get involved. And I mean, the only way people are gonna know who you are is to be out there and get your name out there. So I go, oh, who's this crazy girl with the blue hair? That was a color, not in this picture, but at the time, and I, my hairdresser's like, ah, Tamara, this color is so crazy. What are you doing? She's African. But I was like, I'm going to go with blue so everyone knows who I am. When I'm running for student council, they're like, oh, it's that crazy girl with the blue hair. And that worked because I won all the time. Talking about your brand, you have to be consistent. And when I say one-woman show, which is now the, the new me, rise and shine, it is 
something you present all the time is going to remain the same and it's going to remain constant, obviously. So it's not today I'm one woman show, tomorrow I'm Sasha Fierce or I'm going to be someone else, like I have multiple personality disorder. No. So you're going to make sure that the person that you are is always going to be that same individual and there's consistency there. So people know what to expect from you. You're visible. I'm pretty distinctive. Um, I've been to China and I was attacked everywhere I went, even in the bathroom, because I definitely was very visible. Um, even even in, I was just came back from Sudbury where I delivered a workshop for the government of Canada. And even there, there's someone's like, can I touch your hair? And I don't know, sure, reach in. And I don't know what it is, but, <laughs> but it's everywhere I go. I was at the hospital the other day and the woman's like, um, can I touch you? I was sure, uh, it's okay guys, it's, it's like magic. If it can move on its own, I should tell you that it will. If you look and I'll get you all mesmerized, I should get, I don't know, strings or a puppet up here, it'd be really funny. But it's, you're distinctive and you're visible and you're out there. As a matter of fact, my, my boss is in the, uh, the audience today and she's just so tired of seeing my face everywhere, she called me City Pulse. And it's true, you start to saturate yourself out in the media and they're like, oh man, that Tamara Lopez girl again? How did she get here? Because we did uh, a breakfast for a share in college and I ended up being in this slideshow because this year I had gotten the Queen's uh, Diamond Jubilee Medal. And she was like, how do you, how do, you do that? And I was like, I'm Tamara Lopez. <laughs> and that is, that is what I'm gonna do. I decided that, fast forward now about six years after graduation and I'm paying off all these school loans, and I had a career that was comfortable with the government of Canada, and I had my very stylish condo in Milton, and I had long-term relationship, and talk about boring city. So, well for me, that's, I settled, and, it, cause mother said so. She's like, well you can't be a waitress full time tomorrow, you know, you gotta pay your bills, and obviously so I went and I got this job with the government, and I mean, I'm not unhappy with the job that I have, it's a very important position that we have at, at the border, obviously, protecting the safety of Canadians. But I felt like deep down there was something that was missing. So in 2010, I decided, you know what, I'm going to join an acting website. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And I did, and then lo and behold, I found a position. Uh, they were looking for people to be a TV host in Milton. And I was like, shut the front door, I live there. <laughs> so, and because I can talk, I'm sure I can host, like how hard can that really be? So I ended up going to the audition, and funny enough, a guy named Vishal, who's one of the organizers, is also a Sheridan College, Holy Lynchman, me and him went to the audition together. And then we were hired on to be these TV uh, hosts for a show that never got off the ground. <laughs> so my Hollywood dreams were quashed yet again. Um, then I got called by a guy named Chris, who's standing here filming me right now. And he was like, did you want to host our Milton Santa Claus parade? I was like, yeah. So I go and 2010, me and another individual were hosting the Santa Claus parade. And unfortunately, when Chris got back to the studio, my partner's audio never recorded. So it was like, that's right, Jamie. <laughs> oh, Jamie, you're so funny. <laughs> What's up next, Jamie? And Jamie didn't exist. So apparently <laughs> I sound like I was talking to myself. So unfortunately, Kojiko wasn't able to air that and he had to dub the whole thing. So again, my dreams were quashed and they were like, Santa Claus parade with voiceover from Chris Cox. And it wasn't Tamara Lopez. So I was like, well, forget this idea. I'm gonna have to go back to being a customs officer. So I go to Quebec and I'm gonna be a facilitator and that again, dry city. I get a phone call from someone from the station like, yeah, is this Tamara Lopez? I'm like, the one and only. And she said, did you wanna maybe host a uh, half hour TV show? And this is of course after I came off my, I was on a game show, the ATM machine where you walk up, I was like, oh my God, it's talking. Can you do this and you win money and all that kind of stuff? And I said, like, host a TV show for 30 minutes. Right, this is a true story. She's like, no, no, we're gonna, we've revamped our station. Come on in. So I ended up going, and this is 2011, I guess, June, and I had a TV show on, on TV Coach called Milton. Uh, 44 episodes later, it was called TVC Spotlight. And from there, I think I further developed my actual ability, and I decided to now change my own image. I'm gonna revamp myself. So this is, ooh, a really awful picture of me. Uh, mm, it's TV Kojiko, it's, it's gone, it's now in my house. And the picture of me, and this was a TV show and we're branding the station because they had moved locations as well and this, is, this was a very big deal. So I was like, man, you know what? I can actually maybe go places with this, maybe not Hollywood yet, but I can use it to get me there. So I decided to get more involved in my own community because I, I realized that I'm gonna be my own linchpin. I'm gonna make me something different. So I started to join uh, an acting group called Brightside Players, and we did this wicked play where I'm playing a dude, I told you I have a mustache, right? Just right now, it's, it's camouflage, distraction. So this was me playing the villain in the play last year, and it was in this exact theater where I ended up almost breaking my ankle, uh, which is healing. When I got involved with Brightside Players, 
And then from my work, obviously, with TV Kojiko as well, I met other groups of people. For example, I met the Halton Industry Education Council. And they had asked me if I'd be interested in speaking as a mentor at something called Women at Career Coaches. And I'm like, what? I don't even know where I'm going, and you want me to tell someone else where to go? <laughs> and they're like, no, I think that you're very vibrant, and you've got like this personality. I think you'd be great. So I said, oh, OK. Um, can I bring my mom as my date? And they're like, of course you can. When they gave me the call in March of this year, it was funny because, they, oh, you know, Pooja Honda, who hosts it from CP24, is like, oh, she's running late. So could you host it? And I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> host and speak in front of 700 people? Oh, that's nothing. I got this. So I ended up going to speak, and this is me getting my medal. Uh, cheesy. <laughs> me and my uniform at work, my uh, Diamond Jubilee medal, of course, I got this March. So I ended up going to this event in March as well. This would be me with Pooja Honda. We co-hosted, similar to this mic I'm wearing right now, the Women's Career Coaches event. And again, I spoke to her as being one of my mentors. I got to go shadow her at her station. And I had my mom in the audience. Of course, I thanked her because she is, and again, surround yourself with lots of love and lots of people and your whole fan base, which is one person. So my whole fan base is my mother. And she's like, go Team Discovery Channel. And she's always there for me. And I'm always calling her. I usually call. I went to go see her last night. It was like, I don't know, 11 o'clock after I left an event. And she's like, I'm in my bed. What do you need? I'm like, I need you to love me for five minutes. And I just go there for the pep talk. And I, I'm always asking her, uh, is this a good idea? And, and she's like, you know what? Go with what your heart's telling you to do. And if you feel that that's, that's where you need to be and that's what you want to do, then by all means, do it tomorrow. You have the flexibility at work to be able to pursue other goals. For example, picking up a part-time job at Sheridan College where I'm now a professor in psychology. So apparently that degree from 2004 ended up being to transpire into another position. Who would call, who would ever think I'd be a professor? And I'm like, what kind of credentials do I even need for this job? But I'm up there and they're like, oh, miss, miss, I have a question. And you feel so smart because you read it in the book. And you're like, oh, the answer is this. And you're all confident. The sky is black. And the people believe you because you say the word professor. <laughs> and then you have your brand. And so my brand is One Woman Shows. Again, I'm trying to do everything that I can to be what I've always wanted to be. And again, which of course is in acting, but again, maybe even broadcasting. But you never know where it's going to take you if you if you actually step out of your comfort zone, out of that box, and take in all the new experiences, new opportunities. Um, again, I decided to pick up a third job because I really don't need it. But I was like, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not busy enough because I sleep in my car. So I decided to pick up a, a job with the, uh, the Pan Am Games for 2015. So I'm working for Toronto 2015 right now, uh, part time, in their mascot program, Kel Surprise. <laughs> and. And of course, I'm also, I also do media relations for a group called the Canadian Emergency Services Boxing Association. I'm president of my condominium. I'm on the Alumni Board of Association for the University of Windsor. Um, I don't apparently sleep. But listen, if you put in all that time and that effort and that dedication and all that hard work, it will bring you to a spot like this, the red dot on the floor. It can bring you to a TEDx talk. It can bring you to a high school where I've spoken before about igniting your passion. It can bring you and take you anywhere. And all it takes is just that little spark inside that says, you know what, I can do this, and I will do this. And then you too can have success. <laughs> you can own this face of pure accomplishment. That's right, buddy, I got this. And don't forget, for all my women out there, that behind every successful woman is herself, and I want to be a successful woman. So thank you.